Number 10. What if Bo Jackson never got hurt? Number 10. Okay, I got a story for you. So I told you I had season tickets for the Raiders. It's against Cincinnati. A sellout of over 90,000 fans to see the final piece of this weekend's playoff puzzle. I'll never forget, I'm on the sideline when Bo Jackson takes the ball and he's streaking down the field. Pitch to Bo, outside right, turn it up the side, 30, 35. He's from me to you when he takes the tackle. Holy Toledo! All of us were just like, oh, 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 Bo. Bo knows pain. That's all I remember thinking in that moment. He's hurt. Well, there's a pivotal development. And he was done. Jackson's injury is a hip injury, probably won't return. That was the final play in Bo Jackson's career. If that guy could have just continued his role for five, six, seven, eight years, uh, uh, who knows what would have happened. It's like little kids chasing a grown man. Without a doubt, the greatest athlete of all time. We may never see anyone like Bo Jackson again. Damn, was he good. This is the biggest what if to me of any of them. I'm convinced if Bo Jackson didn't get hurt, he would still be playing. He, he would be the first running back whose career spanned four decades. The Raiders would have a couple more Super Bowls. The Kansas City Royals would have a couple more World Series championships. The Quebec Nordiques would have won some, I assume he would have started playing hockey. Tiger Woods would have been the second best golfer. Everything would have changed. Everything, but possibly the Raiders home address. Remember, this is a time when owner Al Davis was looking to move his team from L.A. back to its original home in Oakland. If Bo Jackson's healthy and the team's thriving, I suspect that the Coliseum would have been jam-packed in the early 90s, and then Al Davis probably wouldn't have had the appetite he did to return. This leads to a relocation shuffle, with the L.A. Rams still moving to St. Louis, but claiming Oakland as their new home in 2016, and the Chargers end up in Las Vegas. If Bo Jackson didn't get hurt, we'd probably all still be playing Tecmo Bowl. We're waiting for Bo 2017 to drop. Madden is who? He's like that guy with the turducken and the bus? Great, good on him. But I'm playing Bo Jackson's video game. Touchdown! I wish this, uh, he had not gotten hurt, just so we could hear more crazy Bo stories. He could bench press a car. <laughs> He saved a baby calf. A bridge was out. Kids were in a bus stranded. He laid down. They used him as a bridge. Yeah, run around the planet and turn time backwards. I think the fact that he did get hurt makes him more of a legend. We may not even be talking about Bo Jackson. Maybe he would have had the rise and the fall. It catapults him to this mythical existence. Thank God for Bo Jackson. We'll never have the answer. We'll never know. I mean, who knows? Bo, Bo, Bo probably does, but... Number nine, what if Monday Night Football never happened? Dun, 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 dun. Bum, 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 bum. That's the sound I always heard when I was a kid, man. Monday sucks except for Monday Night Football. That's the redeemer. Monday Night Football, the longest running primetime show in American television. You gotta feel good tonight. Monday night, you gotta feel it. The lights are on. It's Monday night. There ain't nowhere to hide. Football under the lights just looks different, looks richer, looks more important. It's very much like theater. He did what? No question in my mind that primetime football helped to elevate the NFL well past baseball, and that's why it is the national pastime today. Nobody catches both. This was something that turned the NFL from a Sunday afternoon activity to a lifestyle, made it into an absolute brand. And since the 1970 debut of Monday Night Football, business has been very good for the NFL brand. It makes you wonder, what if we never had football on Monday night? If Monday Night Football wasn't created, there'd be a lot less chicken wings. My head just exploded. What are yeah, you talking no, about? Monday Night no Football. Monday Night Football. It doesn't compute. <laughs> Look out! Right through! A pickpocket by Steve Gleason! It is scooped and scores! 
Monday Night Football had never been created, I have a feeling the divorce rate would go down a good 15% nationwide. The game's final play is a Wilson lock to the end zone. Who has it? Who they give it to? Yeah, I would have been on time way more Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. In better shape, for sure. Out of the way. Oh. Into the arms of Clayton. Oh, and are things going right for the Dolphins tonight? If Monday Night Football was not created, kids across America would have better grades. Would I have been a better student without Monday Night Football? Perhaps, but would you and I be talking about pro football if I had been a better student? Hmm. We got to bring Hank back, man. Get that Monday Night thing going. Get ready for some football. If Monday Night Football were never invented, who would have the courage to ask Americans if they're ready for football? Are you ready for some football? Monday night party. What would Hank Williams be doing with all those rowdy friends? He would have to invite them over to watch Monday night swamp people and antiques roadshow. So long. If there is no Monday night football, I don't believe the NFL is where it is today. It's gotta be a prime time play. It's Monday night. Monday Night Football is arguably the biggest thing that ever happened. Should be higher on the list. That's a disgraceful thing. Monday Night Football is the greatest thing ever invented. It don't get no better than that, baby. The polio vaccine, good. It's good, I'm glad we have it. Monday Night Football, better. Number eight. What if Scott Norwood's kick in Super Bowl 25 was good? A 47-yard field goal try by Scotty Norwood. He can fire the shot heard round the world now. Puts it down, on the way, it's long enough, no good. Wide right. I hate wide right. I mean, I hate the right in general. I believe in curses. It all started with this kick. It came down to one kick and it just wasn't to be this year. That's the true what if if Norwood would have just made the kick. Right down the middle. And for the first time ever, the Buffalo Bills are Super Bowl champions. The Bills win that Super Bowl, so many things happen. So many things happen. So many what ifs in that game. Course of football history gets changed with one play. This could be the start of a dynasty. If Scott Norwood makes this field goal, it changes the direction of some of the 90s biggest franchises. They go into that Super Bowl the following year against the Redskins feeling different. They have a swagger about them. Thurman Thomas doesn't forget his helmet. Thurman Thomas at the five. He goes in for the touchdown. His fourth touchdown. They knock off that Washington Redskins team. So now they're back-to-back -back champions. The following year, they go back to the Super Bowl and they play the rising dynasty that is the Dallas Cowboys. It's big, right? It is big. It's off the right eye, dude. Oh, yeah. If they now are playing a formidable foe from the AFC in the Buffalo Bills, and they beat the Bills in that game, not only do we consider the Bills to be one of the great dynasties, I think the early 90s Cowboys might be held up as the greatest dynasty of all time. Sure, that could happen, but let's try this scenario instead. So now the Bills are 2-1 and one in Super Bowls. They get back to the game for an unprecedented fourth consecutive Super Bowl. Four, baby. How sweet it is. This time, when they're leading 13-7 against the Cowboys in Super Bowl 28, they hang on to win that game. They become the team that wins three Super Bowls in four games. Dynasty. You're, I mean, you're in the level with the Patriots. You know, the football goes three feet to the left, and how does that affect legacies? The Bills have won the Super Bowl! Boy, he's a legend. If he makes that field goal, I mean, they're building statues for him outside the stadium. I'd be wearing a Super Bowl ring and a Hall of Fame ring. That's that's what if. Jim Kelly would be president right now if Norwood would made that field goal. <laughs> and today, I join the greatest team in the mall. When you think about Bill Parcells, for instance, how would people view him with one Super Bowl title? but then having lost that one. Wasn't Belichick the defense coordinator then? And Belichick may not have been Belichick after that and may have not have, oh, oh yeah, my god. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. But now everybody would be a Bills fan. Like every every cool rapper 
would be wearing Bill's gear. If Scott Norwood makes that kick, Ace Ventura is not made. One small twist in history affects all those lives. Ace Ventura should have been a Jim jumping Jim point Jim, for I you. Made, I made Jim Carrey a star. I don't want to live in a world where Scott Norwood hits that field goal. I think Scott Norwood missing the field goal was one of the best things that ever happened to Buffalo Bills fans. Because you look at Buffalo Bills fans now and they've created this identity, the Bills Mafia. Bills Mafia, this is how we do it. Where they're, you know, tailgating and throwing each other through flaming tables. That kind of insanity can only be manifested by torture. So if you don't have the torture, if Scott Norwood makes the field goal, they're, they're happy. They won a Super Bowl. They don't have any sort of identity. I think this is the best possible thing. So thank you, Scott Norwood. I know I've never felt more love than right now. Number seven. What if Dallas didn't trade Herschel Walker? Every superhero, supervillain, they all have their origin story. Here it was, you know, Herschel Walker uh, getting, getting traded. One agent said uh, it's the biggest trade he has ever seen in the NFL, as one other, uh, one owner said it's a, a great train robbery. But whatever it is, we're happy with it. It was the absolute right move. Risky, high risk, you bet. This is an outstanding, outstanding uh, trade regarding the future of the Cowboys. But a lot of people think that because they traded Herschel Walker, that's why they got all these picks. Don't forget, it was, it was Herschel Walker and Neil Schlitz. He was a little known third string punter. That was a big part of it. Google it. We checked. There was no Neil Schlitz in the trade, but the Vikings did get the Pro Bowler Herschel Walker, along with four draft picks that included two third rounders, while Dallas received five players and three picks in return. Jimmy Johnson, he didn't want the players that came in the Herschel Walker trade. He wanted the draft picks. By cutting the players in the trade, Dallas received two additional first round picks, two more second round picks, along with a third rounder. Cowboys got a ton of players out of this trade. Of course, the biggest names, you remember Darren Woodson and Emmitt Smith, and without those two guys, they probably don't go on to win three Super Bowls in four years in the 1990s. What if the Cowboys deemed Walker too valuable to trade? Could the all-time leading rusher have been in the same backfield as the second most prolific passer? And if the Herschel Walker trade hadn't happened, maybe they end up with Emmitt Smith to pair with Brett Favre. And we got a dandy brewing. With Walker still in a Cowboys uniform, Dallas doesn't see the need to trade up in front of Green Bay and select Smith. That means with the 19th pick, the Packers choose Smith over Darrell Thompson. I think the Packers had a great chance to win more Super Bowls if they had a running back like Emmitt Smith. And now you're looking at more than one Super Bowl for that Green Bay Packers team. But the franchise and fan base this what if affects the most is the one who has never won a Super Bowl and was defeated twice by Dallas in the big game. Or maybe the Buffalo Bills end up winning one or two. Western New York <laughs> celebrates the fact that they've got themselves a couple of Lombardi trophies. Yeah! Jerry Jones certainly wouldn't have been in the Hall of Fame without the Herschel Walker trade. I think even he'd tell you that. The willingness to help us have the ammo to build a great team. Herschel, I'll always thank you very much. Who knows if Jerry Jones exists as we know him? I like, think he would exist. He would exist, but like Jerry's world wouldn't be a stadium. It would be like a car lot in Plano. Yeah, he'd be like a used car guy. He'd be like, come on down to Jerry's world. And he'd like have one of those weird windsock things outside. Yeah, I so. could see that. Herschel Walker saved you, Jerry Jones. Number six. What if Johnny Unitas doesn't become a cult? Vice President Nixon is among the jam-packed crowd with eyes on Johnny Unitas, the great cult quarterback. Johnny Unitas, while he was invited to the Steelers during his rookie year, he lost out on the competition. So he was kind of, you know, out of football. Johnny Unitas was a construction worker in Pittsburgh. He was playing football on the weekends for $6 a game. Uh, and then he went to Colts camp and he ended up being one of the greatest quarterbacks in NFL history. John Unitas has passed for more touchdowns and more yardage than any quarterback in history. Now, obviously, the thing that we all look at is, if Johnny Unitas never did that, we wouldn't have had one of the best quarterbacks. The way I look at it is, if Johnny Unitas never did that, 
we might have had one of the greatest construction workers in Pittsburgh history. I feel like Johnny Unitas robbed us of potentially a bunch of great buildings in Pittsburgh had we, we not lost Johnny Unitas construction worker extraordinaire. If Johnny Unitas had stayed with the Steelers, then the Steelers arguably don't go 1-13 in 1969. They don't get the number one pick in 1970. That goes to the Bears. So you got the Bears take Terry Bradshaw. So you got Terry Bradshaw playing for the Bears with Gale Sayers, Dick Butkus. Gale Sayers, the superstar. He cuts, weaves, stops, and goes. He runs with power and precision. This is the eye of a hurricane. Whoever said it was calm never has met Dick Butkus. The Bears become the team of the 1970s. Then there is no Steelers of the 70s because you don't have those first overall picks with Mean Joe and uh, Terry Bradshaw, so the Steelers 70s dynasty never happens if in front of that you replace it with an, a, a Hall of Fame level quarterback. If he doesn't go to the Colts, I mean, my gosh, we don't have the greatest game ever played. United gives to Amici. Everybody insists that football became a TV sport in that championship game against the Giants. It brought the NFL into American relevance. Before that, it's boxing and it's baseball and it's uh, and it's horse racing. Football isn't what football is if Johnny Unitas doesn't go to the Colts. How about that? But to some, the rise of football was inevitable. The force was too strong with Unitas. The NFL was destined to explode. Like, it was like Luke Skywalker. Like, this was gonna happen. Like, R5, D4 was gonna explode because R2 needed to end up in Luke Skywalker's hands. The NFL was gonna explode in the 50s, and Johnny Unitas was gonna be the one there carrying the lightsaber, so to speak. So it would've happened. And now, number five. What if Peyton Manning stays a Colt? Boy, that's a seminal event in pro football history, is uh, Peyton leaving Indianapolis. If the Colts decided not to cut Manning after missing the whole 2011 season, how would their fortunes have changed? That's a question we weren't able to get a consensus on. If Peyton Manning stays in Indianapolis, they probably go to another Super Bowl or two. And I don't think Manning or the Colts win a Super Bowl. Peyton Manning showed he had some good years left, and maybe Indianapolis wins another championship with him. I think he, he finishes with one ring. They do get another ring. Maybe they get another Lombardi with the Colts. Manning doesn't get that second Super Bowl. That's the biggest takeaway of all that stuff. But at least we would have three years less of Papa John's commercials. you would have had a domino effect in that 2012 draft. The Colts weren't gonna go and pick a quarterback when they already had one right there. But what if they'd taken Trent Richardson number one? Because he went third, and they traded for him a year later, gave up a first round pick. If Peyton Manning stays at Indianapolis, Trent Richardson is the greatest running back we've ever seen. And there's no way I'm wrong about that. You end up with RG3 probably going to the Cleveland Browns a few years early. Touchdown Browns, RG3! The Cleveland Browns probably wouldn't still be looking to solve their quarterback crisis that they've had for, what, 35 years now. But Andrew Luck probably then goes to the St. Louis Rams, and he becomes a star in St. Louis instead of in Indianapolis. I'm not paid to make those decisions. They're still in St. Louis. There's no way they're not in St. Louis. People are going. They have their back to, like, the greatest show on turf. This place is going crazy. L.A. never gets its football team. Well, now it has the Chargers. By now, you're probably wondering, wait, what happens to that team in Mile High, then? Don't worry. We've saved the best for last. Does that mean Tim Tebow sticks around? Does that mean Tim Tebow still has a career in the NFL? Maybe Tim Tebow's still in the league. I didn't even think about this. If Peyton Manning doesn't leave Indy and come to Denver, then Tim Tebow may win a Super Bowl just like Peyton did in Super Bowl 50. If you think how Manning played that final year, Tebow could do that. Tebow would have a ring. Yeah! Yeah! Tim Tebow might have a Super Bowl in this scenario. No, you can't do that. That like changes the whole course of the United States. That changes everything. He'd probably be the president. Guys always got a plan. Let's do it, baby. I mean, look, if he would have won a Super Bowl, he definitely has a shot to be president. You just, that's just what it is. First eligible for the ballot in 2024, Tebow wins in a landslide. But unfortunately, it never happens because of our next what if. Number four. What if John Elway becomes a Colt? 
So I think John Elway going to the Baltimore Colts would have wide-ranging ramifications. But I think this, of all the things on this list, this might have the biggest butterfly effect of everything that could happen. Which is why this is our fourth greatest what if. Because if Elway doesn't demand a trade out of Baltimore, the landscape of the NFL is drastically altered forever. John Elway spurns Baltimore, and a year later, the Colts leave. These two events are not unrelated. If Elway stays in Baltimore, Baltimore stays in Baltimore. But it does leave some open pieces. Because you remember, some other teams started to follow suit and move. So now the St. Louis Cardinals end up moving to Indianapolis. You have the expansion team in Arizona. The LA Rams become the Jacksonville Rams. So now the Raiders are like, you know what? If we're gonna be the only team in this market, we're gonna stay here. So they become the LA Raiders forever. St. Louis builds the Trans World Dome for the Cleveland Browns. So we have the LA Raiders, the Phoenix expansion team, the St. Louis Browns, Indianapolis Cardinals, Jacksonville Rams, and Baltimore Colts, like it's just science. Broncos just become a team kind of without an identity. As a result of Elway not going to Denver, the Broncos never become a relevant playoff team. With Denver out of the playoff picture, that leaves the door open for a franchise left on the Super Bowl doorstep three times by Elway and the Broncos. Cleveland changes completely because they had two golden opportunities that get, get wiped away because of John Elway's magic. Oh, the drive, maybe the drive doesn't happen, right? All of a sudden, the drive doesn't happen. Tearing the heart out of Cleveland. They go to at least one, maybe two Super Bowls. They win one of those Super Bowls. Thank you, thank you, oh, yeah. Super Bowl! And Cleveland is in the world's saddest city forever. Thanks a that lot, guy. John. Most importantly, if the Baltimore Colts never leave Baltimore, Barry Levinson has a happier life, never decides to make a TV show based on a book about murder cops in Baltimore, there's no homicide, which means everybody remembers Richard Belzer only as a stand-up comedian. There's no John Munch, which means Law & Order Special Victims Unit never happens, which means everyone only remembers Ice-T as a rapper, and nobody knows what to watch on the USA Network for all of the entire 2000s. Number three, what if Bill Belichick stayed with the Jets? Due to the various uncertainties surrounding my position as it relates to the team's new ownership, um, I've decided to resign as the head coach of the New York Jets. Following the 1999 season, just 24 hours after agreeing to take over as HC of the NYJ from his former boss, Bill Parcells, Bill Belichick had a change of heart. And I want to wish everyone with the Jets my very best. Okay? Thank, thank you. It's the greatest drop the mic, walk off the podium in NFL history, isn't it? It was almost perfect. He sensed this. He sensed that the Jets, it's not going to work. Good decision by Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick immediately ascends to the head coach of the Jets. Ah, what would happen if Bill Belichick stayed on and was the head coach of the Jets for more than uh, a couple of hours? The one that got away, Bill Belichick. Picturing him in like a cut-off Jets hoodie with the sleeves up. But I don't know if it would have worked out the same way with the Jets that it did in New England. You're saying, great, you would have many Super Bowls. No, I don't believe it. If Belichick stayed with the Jets, they definitely would have been better, but they still would have needed a quarterback. Oh, God. Would they have drafted Brady? If he would have fallen to the Jets in the sixth round of the 2000 draft, if Bill Belichick would have been there, frankly, those guys would have been just as successful. All right, let's go out and win. And instead of talking about 15 years of dominance and five Super Bowls with the Patriots, we'd be talking about our AFC East oppressors and overlords, the New York Jets. Nobody's ever won more Super Bowls. Nobody's ever been better. Who knows what the Pats pedigree ends up being. Oh man, ooh, I'm starting to actually maybe like this. Despite having great ownership and some great players, I think Bill Belichick is probably that organization's MVP. If Belichick doesn't come to New England, this doesn't happen. That's a fact. 
this doesn't happen. Okay, so let's tweak the scenario and say Brady did get drafted by New England. Could Belichick handle New York without him? If William Belichick had stayed with the New York Jetties, magic would have occurred. You would not have the butt fumble, you would have the butt touchdown. Are we talking about Mark Sanchez having like five Super Bowl rings? Whoa! That can't be possible. <laughs> Not so sure that they would have went to seven Super Bowls because it is New York after all, and there's a lot of distractions. Touchdown. You lost the game, you idiot! Peyton Manning's resume may look a lot better because the Patriots wouldn't have been in the way. They wouldn't have been in the playoffs, and I think the, uh, the Colts ruled the AFC East, so I believe he would have at least two more rings. Very special. It would be hard to live in New York as a Giants fan if the Jets were really good. I feel like that would be annoying. <laughs> Where would all the negativity come from if the Jets won and their fans were happy? We have this symbiotic relationship with the Jets. You know, they're bad, New Yorkers get to complain, everybody wins. And if Belichick was there and suddenly the Jets were good, then all that hate and complaining would go to the Knicks, and I just don't think the Knicks could take that. Number two, what if the reception wasn't immaculate. This one particular play, I spent a lot of time thinking about. It's down to one big play, 22 seconds remaining. The Oakland Raiders have taken a 7-6 lead. Hang on to your hats. Here come the Steelers out of the huddle. Gary Bradshaw at the controls. And Bradshaw back and looking again. Bradshaw running out of the pocket, looking for somebody to throw to. Fires it downfield, and there's a collision. The Steelers would lose the next week to the undefeated Dolphins, but what if instead of immaculate, it was incomplete? What franchise's fortunes are changed? This game sets a tone for how the 70s is played the entire way through. Then, then you don't have the start of the Steelers dynasty, right? That play is what turned everything around for the Pittsburgh Steelers and launched the greatest dynasty in pro football history. If it doesn't happen, I, I don't think that the dynasty happens. I don't think Pittsburgh has four Super Bowls. If they didn't win that game, I still say they go on to win a championship. It's a wonky rule that it went by division who hosted playoff games. So if the Steelers lose that game, the Dolphins, who were undefeated at the time, would have to go to Oakland to play a playoff game. Very tough place to play. Especially for the Dolphins, who had never won a road game in Oakland in their franchise history. Like, what would have happened to the Dolphins and their legacy had they lost the perfect season, if they had lost in the playoffs? The Dolphins should definitely send Franco a bottle of champagne, because clearly, he kept their perfect season alive. I think it impacts the Raiders more. Maybe Ken Stabler, his aura just grows with that game. Kenny Stabler has a 30-yard touchdown run that nobody remembers. Stabler to pass, steps away from the rush. He's going to run up the left side. 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown! Kenny Stabler goes all the way! Like, that would have been the play that everybody recalls. They think of Kenny the Snake Stabler. And how does the toll of losing from the Immaculate Reception affect the burnt-out coach who retired at age 42? That play bothered me then, bothers me today, and will bother me until the day I die. He gets that Super Bowl, Super Bowl seven in 72, and he gets Super Bowl 15. Now he has three Super Bowl rings. Then you start talking about a coach who is considered the greatest of all time. Do we have a Madden video game? Hi, everyone. Welcome to John Madden Football. Number one. What if the AFL and NFL didn't merge? It was obviously the most important single moment in NFL history, that merger, because it led to the expansion that we see now. It was bound to happen. That's, that's where you lose me on number one. There's nowhere where a sport has managed to have two leagues that operate independently of each other, and it lasts. Really? I don't know. Really? 
The greatest what if moment has to be the AFL NFL merger because, very simply, the NFL doesn't exist without it. Seriously. All right, it's over. And the what ifs related to this range from the ridiculous. If there's no AFL NFL merger, then you're talking about a whole different universe. To the absurd. I could be appearing on the AFL network right now. I could be earning twice as many paydays. I really feel like I got the raw end of this deal. Think about the AFL, they threw the ball all over the place. They had characters, it was fun. That was the original fun league. Unbelievable. There were policies, there were rules, there were stylistic issues that the NFL adopted from the AFL, which makes the NFL what it is today. So imagine if the leagues didn't merge and the NFL remained the stuffy league of the power sweep and the AFL the flamboyant home of the vertical pass and other innovations that we now see as the norm. And a baby! Hey, what's up there? If the merger never happened, I think it'd be fun to have two competing leagues. I liked a separate but equal model. You would have fans who are like ardent AFL people. You never see them play until the Super Bowl. There could have been a place for two sort of leagues, I suppose, but you'd have the Premier League and you'd have the Secondary League, and I don't think it would be the power of what you have today. They look like they're flat as hell. Wow. That is really bad. On another day in another year, it will surely be the turn of the AFL. Here's an argument. Could the AFL, if somehow they could have gotten the stranglehold on it, could the AFL have been the NFL? You know, was there a chance that the New York Giants could have disappeared or the Pittsburgh Steelers could have disappeared? Are you kidding me? No way! You wouldn't have the Super Bowl. And imagine that. Super Bowl, baby. Dream come true. Think about all the history that's happened and how that game has transcended sports, really, and become a national holiday. So you'd be robbing us of a national holiday and the best party of the year. This is ridiculous here. Man, if a world without the Super Bowl is the outcome of our number one what if, then we're sorry we even proposed this show. We deserve better. Someone get us back to reality. Here's the thing, if the AFL merger didn't happen, it still would have eventually happened. Because anytime there's two businesses that big, they're bound to, to link up and form like a superpower. So the what if of if there had been no merger is that there would have been a merger. Thank God. Yes! Forgive me if I get emotional. Everything is great! Yes! yes sir. Hallelujah!